Hey everyone, this is Barricade Kindle. In this video, I will give an intuitive introduction to probability density functions. But first I'll explain what a histogram is and then transition to explaining probability density functions. I will not use formulas initially so that you get an intuitive explanation without any formulas. Okay? Suppose you want to purchase your first residential home. Let's say you have a price range in mind. You are able to afford a home priced between $150,000 and $200,000. Now you wonder how difficult or how easy is it to find a house in that price range of $150,000 to $200,000? To answer that question, you go get some data which contains sale prices of residential houses in your city, maybe recent sale prices. And in your sample data, you have, let's say, 10,000 sale prices. And from that data, from, from the sample you have, you identify the minimum price of recently sold houses in your area is 29,792. And the maximum price was 834,933. If you assume there is similar or equal availability of houses, then you may think the availability of houses is relatively uniform and the density of houses when looked by price is sort of similar. And that's usually not the case. So you're sort of assuming a histogram that looks like this, what you see on the screen. But that's not usually the case for, especially for house prices. So what do you do next? From the data you have on sale prices of houses, you decide to discretize sell prices into equal intervals of, let's say, length um, $50,000, zero to $50,000, $50,000 to $100,000, and so on. And then count the number of houses that sold for prices in each interval. And of the 10,000 houses in your sample data, you find that 46 houses sold for a price between zero dollars and fifty thousand dollars and 868 sold for a price for a sale price between fifty thousand dollars and one hundred thousand dollars i'm using left open right closed intervals here and so 2076 between hundred thousand hundred fifty thousand so you see that 25.69 percent of homes in your sample had sale prices between hundred fifty thousand and two hundred thousand but only 0.46% had sale prices between $0 and $50,000. Okay, not all price ranges had similar density. What do I mean by that? Imagine a hypothetical neighborhood. And this neighborhood has grids or neighborhood grid that restricts only houses that would be sold within a specific price range to be built next to each other. Okay, how densely populated would would the grid or the neighborhood from one price range be different from the other price range? If you plot this summarized data where you have price ranges and then the count of houses, and then you set the vertical axis to be the count or the frequency of houses in each interval and the horizontal axis representing the sale price, you get what we refer as a histogram and then each bar, the length of each vertical bar or the height of each vertical bar uh, displays the count or the frequency of uh, houses in, the, in, in each of the intervals. We can also divide the count or frequency in each range by the total number of houses in your sample data. And then you get a sample relative frequency for each price interval. And if you add up these relative frequencies or proportions, sample proportions for each interval, you get, they, they add up to 1.0. And if you plot these, uh, if, you, if you adjust the histogram so that instead of counts on the vertical axis, now you have the relative frequencies, you get another form of histogram that uses relative frequencies. All right, I'm going, I'll, I'm getting into densities, so just, just bear with me for reasons that would uh, that will hopefully be apparent by the end of this lesson we would like to see to, to have an area covered by this vertical bars to sum up to 1.0 now 
Now, for if you, if you look at each of the vertical bars, the, their area is the width of the the width of the, the bar multiplied by the height of the bar. And this plot, I have the height as the relative frequency or the proportion. By what factor should I scale each height in this histogram so that the total area sums up to 1.0? Maybe I should start with what is the area covered by these vertical bars in my histogram now without making any adjustments? And that is equal to 0 0.046 times 50,000. That gives you the area of the first vertical bar. And so when you calculate for each of the rest, 0 0.0868 times 50,000 plus 0 0.2076 times 50,000 and so on. When you do the algebra, you get the total area of this histogram that we see that uses relative frequency is equal to the length of each equidistant interval. So that's equal to 50,000 in this case. Therefore, if I adjust the height of each bar by the side, by the size of the interval, I get an area covered by the histogram to equal to 1.0. What do I mean by that? I essentially divide the relative frequencies by the width of the interval to get what we call the density. And then I can actually plot a histogram now that uses this density values on the vertical axis, which was obtained by dividing the proportions by the width of the intervals. The height tells us the relative likelihood of observing values in, in that specific interval. Now let's connect the top center of each of these bars to create a line. All right. As the interval gets smaller and smaller, the height of the bars estimate the relative likelihood of observing a value close to a very specific point. All right. So if we leave only the lines connecting to the top of the bars and remove the bars, we get what resembles the probability density function. You can actually estimate the probability density function so that you get a smoother curve. And this curve is what we call a probability density function. Now, let me introduce some notation of probability density function. For a random variable denoted by x, capital X, the probability density function is denoted by the formula f subscript x of x. So the capital X denote the random variable and the little x uh, denotes some observed instance. I can actually replace the small x by something else like u and I, that should still work. I simulated the sale price data from a Gamma distribution with shape parameter equal to 6 and a scale parameter of 33,000. And that probability density function of a Gamma distribution is given by this formula. Okay, This is a continuous random variable. That means it can take infinitely many values. Let me emphasize the word infinite here. If a random variable can take one of the infinitely many values, the probability of observing a specific value is zero because that's one of the infinitely many values. But I can calculate the probability of observing values close to that value, to that specific point that I have. Okay. In a small interval that includes that point, I can calculate the probability of observing values in that small interval. Now, how do I do that using a probability density function? The probability density function evaluated at a given point does not equal the probability of observing that specific point. However, the probability of observing value in that small interval that includes the specific point in mind is approximately equal to the length of the interval times the probability density function value at that point. Now, remember, this is an approximation. It's not exact. Now, let's go back to the place where we plotted the histogram that used density as the height of the bars. To get the density, we divided the proportion of observations or the relative frequency by the width of the interval. We can rewrite this to get the proportion of observations in a given interval, which should be a, 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 sample, uh, a sample analog of the probability of observing values in that interval that to be equal to the density times the length of the interval. All right. Now you can see the parallels 
between this formula that I have, the proportion of observations in a given interval equals density in that interval times the length of the interval, and the approximate probability that I have up here. This is because for a very small interval, the area under the probability density function is very close to the area of that vertical rectangle that you have. Now this gets us to a one concept I want you to keep in mind, which is the probability that a random variable x takes values between points A and B is equal to the area under the probability density function. That lies within that interval. Calculus gives us a way to calculate area under a curve, and that is using integrals. So these are key formulas to keep in mind. So the probability that a random variable x is between, takes values between points A and B, is equal to the integral from point A to point B of the probability density function f of x dx. If I, take, if I take this notion to the extreme and ask, what is the probability that x takes values between negative infinity and positive infinity? What will you get? So that is the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of x dx. This is the entire area under the probability density function. The way we constructed the PDF is so that this area is equal to 1.0, if you recall from the histogram uh, plots that we did. Okay, so one concept to keep in mind is it's an integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of x dx is 1.0 if f of x is a valid probability density function. What else? Relative likelihood could be zero, right? Relative likelihood of observing a value between two points could be zero. You may not observe anything, especially for, in this example, we have sale prices. You don't expect sale prices to be negative. So if I ask you, what is the probability or what is the relative likelihood of observing values between negative 50 and negative 45,000, negative 50,000, negative 45,000, that is equal to zero. Or the relative likelihood could be, could be above zero or greater than zero, but it cannot be less than zero. So this tells me that the probability density function can take values greater than or equal to zero. So in summary, a probability density function takes values greater than or equal to zero. And we also said the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of the PDF f of x dx should equal to one. And we also said the probability of observing values between two points a and b is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. One point to remember is f of x, the probability density function, represents the relative likelihood of observing values in a small in a small interval around that value x. And we also said approximately that probability of observing values in a small interval is equal to is approximately equal to f of x at that specific value times the length of the interval in question. All right, that concludes this lesson. I know there's a lot in here, but I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching.